So last week, the government announced that they'll be releasing the 2021 federal budget on April 19th, 2021. So that's less than a month, uh, about three weeks away right now. During the past few months, we've seen housing prices just soar all over Canada, not just in London. So we've seen a lot of stakeholders, main players in the mortgage market, in the housing market, start to basically beg the government to do something to cool it. Three out of the five big banks, BMO, Scotia, and as of late, RBC, have started making calls for the government to step in, say, noting that there's a housing bubble, that we're under severe risk of overvaluation, and that, um, that the government needs to cool it, needs to cool it down the housing market. The Bank of Canada has no noted that they're getting a little worried and that they're t keeping a close eye on the market to see what happens and see if they need to step in. And even CMHC just recently released a report noting that five of the bigger cities in Canada are at, a, are at risk of being far overvalued and that something needs to be done. So when you get the big banks, the mortgage insurers, and the Bank of Canada all within, the, all within one month saying that something needs to be done, it, there's a, that's a good sign that um, there'll be something in the federal budget to, do, to cool the housing market. But what's that going to do to London's market? London and surrounding area, although it means a lot to us, is a very small city on the, in the grand scheme of things, but federal policies actually do have an effect just on us, even if they're designed to, to cool some of the bigger cities. So, so what happens to London's market? Now this video is going to go over some of the proposals offered by some of the key stakeholders and see what the potential effects on London's market will have. I think it's good to note from the outset that the Bank of Canada has no intention to raise interest rates uh, for the foreseeable future. They've already said that they probably won't be looking to raise their key rate until um, 2023. So they're waiting to see how the economy recovers, what kind of inflation we're going to have following all of the stimulus uh, spending to really get an idea as to when they should raise the rate. So although raising rates might change the housing market, that's not really a serious option that's, go that's going to be put forward anytime soon. That doesn't mean that the banks won't raise rates, but the key rate at the, at the central bank is not going to be changed, most likely. Although never say never. So one option, and we've talked about this in another video, is raising the stress test. I'm not going to go into it too in depth in here because I already have, but London previously over the past few years and right now doesn't show really all that susceptible to raises in the stress test. Uh, there are a number of reasons, mainly because our average income actually isn't that much higher than the average um, affordability in London. And mostly, and this is going to come up again and again when we look at any of the options, is that London's proximity to Toronto makes it a little bit different, a little bit less susceptible to changes in the financing. Second, there's been some talk about them raising the minimum down payment requirements to get a mortgage um, with less than 20% down. So right now it stands at 5%. This was actually brought up last year when it was when there was a fear that there was going to be far too many deferrals and that people wouldn't be able to make their mortgage payments the idea was put forward by the bank of canada that maybe they should raise the minimum down payment to 10 percent up from right now's five percent that idea was quickly shot down um, cmhc made a lot of predictions last year and a lot most of them did not come true they predicted an 18 percent drop in the can in Canada's housing market, and that didn't happen. Obviously, almost quite the opposite. Um, so, is the government going to change the minimum down payment requirements in the in the next budget? It's doubtful that they will. Reasons for that is that it will be extremely politically unpopular. We keep moving the goalpost on these for first time home buyers um, with the market going up and up over the past few years. People save their 5% down, and it takes a long time for the average family to save 5% down. And then all of a sudden you're going to tell them that they have to, that they have to double their down payment? I mean, that's, that's cruel. And, well, cruelty doesn't test well politically. 
But let's say that they did, just for argument's sake. Let's say that they did raise it from 5% down to 10% down. Is that going to help? Is that going to change London's market by that much? I would say probably about half of my clients go with 5% down. With that said, when we look at the offers being submitted, it's all 10 to 15 different offers. I'm sure not all of them are 10 to 15% down. In fact, a lot of them are cash buyers from Toronto. So this is gonna, when you're looking at the London market and what the budget or what the government can do to change it, we always have to remember that Toronto and Toronto cash buyers, those retirees moving to London, cash rich, that don't that are not susceptible to these uh, to the, to finance conditions that are being put forward by the government. That's always going to have a, a weird interplay with London's market, uh, something very different than what we see in other cities in Canada. So, if they raise the down payment, for argument's sake, will it would it hurt London's housing market? It might, it might, but it wouldn't be drastic. We, I wouldn't expect a real drastic change um, into it, in London. So, if raising the stress test isn't going to really cool London's market very much. And if raising the down payment, one, probably wouldn't happen, and two, isn't likely to have any drastic effects in London, then would eliminating the principal residence exemption from capital gains tax actually have an effect? Well, now that could. That is the new option that was just suggested by RBC. That's going to be extremely unpopular uh, should, it, should it come out. But let's take a look at it. Reducing a tax on the sale of your principal residence is obviously attractive to the government for two different reasons. First being it could help to cool the housing market. And second, well, they'll get tax money from your principal residence. And we haven't had that before. That could definitely go a long way, or at least a partial way, to help the country's finances. So that's definitely attracted to them. With that said, and we've talked about this before, there's a real supply issue in Canada. There's not enough houses for sale. And this is especially acute in London, where uh, developers have been saying for years that we don't have nearly enough supply and we need to build, build, build for the amount of demand that we have. If they were introduced a tax on your principal residence, although that might stop a lot of people from Toronto from selling their house and moving to London, well, that's also going to stop a lot of London buyers, or look, sorry, that's going to also stop a lot of current London homeowners from selling their house because they just made it more expensive to sell your house. They would just make it more expensive to sell your house. When you're trying to cool the market, although it might be attractive to get the tax, to get the tax revenue, making it so that people don't want to sell their house is just going to drive up demand, which is going to do nothing to help, the, help with the prices of houses, um, especially in London. Is the government actually going to start taxing your, the sale of your principal residence? I would be very, very surprised if they did. As much as raising the down payment requirements would be political suicide, more so I think would be would be ta starting to tax the sale of your principal residence. Uh, there's a lot of homeowners out there who really count on their homes as their retirement funds. And they've made plans over the past 20, 30, 40 years on that's, that's where they put their money for their retirement. And if you're going to introduce a new tax on that, that's, that's political suicide. That's not going to go over very well. So if they did, yes, it could, it could seriously, it could cool London's housing market. But it's very unlikely that they will. So what do I think they're going to do? It's anyone's guess. Um, they've got a real catch-22 problem right now. Canada's real estate market right now is really driving a large portion of our GDP, which we need. We need some driving forces in the economy, especially after we keep going in and out of lockdown. With that said, as people lock themselves into more and more mortgages, it causes two problems for Canada. One, we have an overheated housing market which we can't have. We saw in 2008 in the United States how dangerous that can be to a country's economy. But also, and this has been noted by the government and by the Bank of Canada, we can't have it where so much of the country's economic resources are going towards just housing, just to the banks. As people lock down, lock into these large mortgage payments needed to facilitate these, uh, the purchase of these large homes, well, that's money they're not spending elsewhere. 
if most of your money is going towards uh, your mortgage payment, then it's not buying cars. It's not buying renovations. It's not going out to eat. It's not going to the movies. It's not doing all these other things that help various sectors of our economy. So there's a real, there's a real need um, on the part of the government, both for now in, in the immediate term and in the future as we try to grow our economy back after the pandemic. Um, there's a very need on the part of the government to, to try to do something to fix it, to fix this. Um, it's not just, it's not just trying to avoid a 2008. It's also trying to direct our, our, um, it's also trying to direct our financial resources in the best manner possible. That that's best for everybody. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe and we'll have updates, um, as, as new issues come out.